Welcome back to Pacific Drive. At the end of the last episode, uh, I was trying to figure out how storms work. Whoa. Uh, that's part of how they work, I guess. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how storms work, and uh, I had a couple of early guesses. I actually broke into the episode to give you an updated view because I was so wrong during the actual episode about how storms work. But even with my little break-in, I was still wrong. Uh, so... Let me tell you how I think storms work today. And actually, let me start somewhere else. So and we're going to try to verify this today. So right here, this is the fabrication station. This is basically my tech tree. Like, this is full of things that I can't do yet that I would like to be able to do. And the main cost of, up, of unlocking these things, they all have, like, prerequisites and things like that. But the main cost is energy. Stable energy, unstable energy, and corrupt energy. I've never seen unstable or corrupt energy, but I have seen stable energy... That's the energy that you get from those yellow globes that you pick up in the world. The things that fuel your arc device that let you teleport out of the level. And you need to have a certain amount of this uh, in order to progress. And so you have to, like, collect as much of it as you can. The problem is, I got the impression at the end of the last episode that I actually had to flee a level the moment I got enough energy. That basically, as soon as I got enough energy... Um, the storm was going to start, and I was going to have to get out as fast as I possibly could. However, I don't think that's the case after having done a little bit more research on the internet. So I want to test this out today. So what, uh, when we're looking at these nodes, uh, we can see that they usually have some kind of hazard marked out on them, right? Um, this one, it's in the middle of some kind of weird orange cloud, and, uh, and it's got serious extreme conditions in there. I don't want to go there at all. I do not feel prepared for that. Um, this one, for some reason, this node isn't available at all, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it's the last place I went? That would actually make sense if they didn't let me go to the same place twice. This spot right here, this is where I first got, like, ran afoul of a storm, and it was pretty bad. This spot right here, it's got, you see that pink uh, dove icon? It's got the peaceful icon. And originally, I thought that meant there will be no storms here. But there are definitely storms in peaceful areas. There are storms that kick in after um, you have, uh, basically when you're about to leave. And so the question I have is, I originally got the impression that as soon as I got enough of the arc fuel, of the stable energy to leave, the, um, the storm would immediately kick in and I would have to leave. But I got the impression from doing more research that that is not the case. That actually, in an area like this that doesn't have the dove, there's like a timer until the storm will happen and grabbing that stable energy accelerates the timer and and so that actually does make the storm happen more quickly uh, and the storm is inevitable in those areas but in these areas the storm only happens when you open the gateway and so you can actually collect as much stable energy as you want from these areas before the storm kicks in that's what i believe is going to be happening um so actually, I'm looking at each of these areas, and, and, and they've got these little bars that are saying how much of each kind of stuff is available in these areas. It looks like this area right here actually has the dove. It's going to be stable. And it's got more energy than a lot of the other places. Like this area looks like it doesn't have very much energy in it at all. It also doesn't have a lot of houses to scavenge. It's, it's low on a lot of things. So this might not be the most productive place to go. However, this is a story mission, and I kind of want to save that a little bit until later. Um... One thing that I'm worried about is, like, if I'm trying to build up energy over time, if all of, the, like, the sort of outer areas, the later game areas, if none of them have the dove, that feels like that'll challenge my ability to, um, to sort of relaxingly grind a little bit in the background. Like, I might be, I, I might basically end up feeling required to put myself in the worst possible situations at all times. But anyway, let's, let's say that this is our destination, because we want to test this theory that I can go through this area and get all of the stable energy in it and not trigger a storm. And we're going to be careful about it in case I'm wrong, in case we actually uh, do trigger a storm. By the way, I have been upgrading my vehicle, and I'm not sure how much of the upgrading you've actually witnessed, so I should, like, introduce you to it. Um, I'm now able to craft, like, regular old headlights, so I don't have, like, a weird-looking headlight sitting on there. I've got steel panels and doors uh, along the sides here. Uh, so the car is just generally more durable. And I think, I think that might also give it more protection. I'm not sure. Like more protection from radiation and stuff. That I'm not sure about. Uh, I've also unlocked 
these uh, side racks to let me install equipment on the side. So right here, for instance, I've got side storage where I'm keeping all of my backup equipment. Um, and then over here, I've got a lightning rod. And what this will do is charge up the battery of my um, of my car if I'm if the car is struck by lightning. And the car gets struck by lightning a lot. <laughs> so uh, so that seemed like it would be pretty useful. Um, so my little checklist here is saying that I don't have any repair putty. I absolutely have repair putty. It's just not in my inventory. And I've also got a battery jumper. Um, I feel like that checklist should probably count items that I've put in the car and not just items that I've got on my person. Uh, maybe that's a bug. Maybe they actually did intend to include it. But in any case, in any case, uh, I should greet my chat. We've got uh, Airy Twitch in here. We've got Ranith Gord, Sunny Games, and Kiwi Burn, and probably a couple other people. It's good to have you all of you here. Oh, wait. Nope. Wrong door. The doors are highlighted, Jeffrey. <laughs> you can tell which one you're about to open. One thing that I'm liking is the fact that the sun is up right now, because <laughs> dealing with headlights and flares and things like that, uh, especially when I'm streaming, I want people to like see what's going on on the screen. Uh, can be particularly uh, difficult. So, uh, just moan, uh, or is it just money? I don't know. Just moan seventy five wants to know what I'm thinking of this game because they're on the fa fence about whether to get it. So this game does not explain itself to you very clearly. Um, but that's kind of part of the experience. You're supposed to be somebody who's dropped in out of nowhere, who doesn't understand the equipment and is solely figuring it out over time. So I've made a lot of mistakes in trying to understand it. So I would recommend watching somebody else play it. Maybe me or maybe someone else. I don't care. Uh, but <laughs> watching somebody play it to sort of get the sense of how it actually works because there's been a lot of places where I've been like missing information. But as I my understanding of this game grows, I am really, really liking it. And it is really fun to just sort of like drop into a fairly low challenge, low threat area and just like scavenge and explore and just sort of feel your way through this weird world. Oh, just Monet is how you want me to pronounce your name. That makes sense. Monet like the painter. Got it. Okay, I'll stick with that in the future. So this is an area I've never been before. It doesn't look like it's got a lot of scavenging available, but we're here to try out the collection of stable energy, and we'll see how much of it we can get without incurring a storm. All right. We're just creeping forward like a weirdo. Let's park for a second. And let's have a look at where we are. Okay, so we're here. Okay, so there's a larger dose of energy available right there. And then there's, like, I think it's a gas station further down the road and more energy. There's something blue over here. I don't know what this blue thing is at all. It looks like an audio cassette, maybe? Is it some kind of, like, bit of story? Oh, and it looks like we got train tracks. Okay, so maybe I want to go down this way. Then see if I can cross over land, scavenge here. Then head back up. Oh, we got a thing to listen to. While we're driving, let's listen to a thing. That's not how you do it. Oh, you know what my favorite remnant was? The record player. You remember Francis? You, you play records normally, but then every now and then you hear weird voices. Like that one time it was my fifth grade lunch lady. <sighs> this again. Uh, you know, the sooner I get this out of my system, the sooner you can have some peace and quiet. <sighs> Fine. Hey, had a girl. Oh, boy. Hey, driver, listen. Of all the legends, of all the stories that have spawned in the zone, <laughs> trust me, there are so many. Remnants? One of the best. I'll start from the beginning. <clears throat> in 1964, strange objects began appearing throughout the zone. They were, uh, shabby, cast-off things that were imbued with strange properties. Uh, a broken microwave that froze food instead of warming it. A rusty can of paint that produced every color in existence. Always so out of place that people were irresistibly drawn to them. Yeah, you know, like a mysterious car in the forest, right? I don't, I don't know what those are. Can I escape them? Um. Oh, they're causing problems. They're making the car difficult to drive. Maybe I have to clear them off first, but how?
Is it that simple? Now, can I scrap this? Okay, I can. And I got a welded steering wheel. I guess that's some kind of uh, cosmetic? Are there any more of those? Oh, yeah. Well, hey, if I can destroy these things. So it looks like these things are just harmful in that they disorient my car. But as hazards go, since they seem to actually give me resources, these might not be that bad. Okay. Yeah, got some circuit boards. So Mad Max already asks, can we get this driving in State of Decay 2? I don't think that most people actually want this kind of driving experience in State of Decay 2. There are a lot of people that do. Okay, I'm not going to play the radio this time. Um, I think there are a lot of people that do want this kind of thing. But I think it's not everybody. Okay, so now that we've got some arc energy... Okay, we've got enough arc energy right now that we could actually leave. That one dose was enough. And you'll notice there's no storm coming. So, okay, so it looks like... So far, my hypothesis is correct. At least in a peaceful area like this one. It seems like the storm is only coming when I trigger the exit. So once I trigger the exit, I really do have to get out of here. Okay, so I could... How much gas do I need? I, I don't think I really need a lot of gas. So I think I'm just going to try to scavenge this place rather than uh, getting gas. Okay, so there's one item that I'm really looking forward to getting. Apparently there's an item that lets you actually remove entire working pieces from a car rather than having to scrap cars. At least that's the impression it gives when I look at it in the fabrication dealie. And that sounds pretty cool. I mean, obviously most of these pieces I don't want on my car, but now and then I'll find a car in pretty good condition that's got actually a piece on it that outlevels the stuff that's on my car. And I'm like, I would love to be able to just grab that off-road tire or whatever and stick it stick it directly on my car. Uh, what, okay. They keep making these noises. There's, okay, there's something on the horizon over there that seems to be making a noise. I wonder if they did that, like... Because one thing they could have done is just put a bunch of random noises in the game, right? But I wonder if they associated the random noises with landmarks. So that, like, when you hear the noise and you look on the horizon, you see that there's something on the horizon that might be causing it. And it might give you a little bit more of a sense of um, these things in the distance being ominous and dangerous. All right, so I think I've completely stripped this car. This one... Ooh, this one's got steel panels. So, okay, yeah, so the crude... So the yellow highlighted stuff, like w what was on this car, this gives you, these are crude panels. This is what my car started with originally. Now I've upgraded my car to steel panels. So it looks like if I wanted to actually take a chunk off this car wholesale, I could and put it on my car and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be crap. And I'm... Oh, armored panel. That looks like that's even better than what I've got. Now, I can't... I can't detach it and just use it. But eventually, I might have a tool that would let me do it. Let me actually upgrade my car directly from other cars. Yeah, it looks like this door is armored, too. All right, and then this tire... So yeah, Mad Max is saying we need to get tire changes in State of Decay 2. Uh, so I think in State of Decay 1, you might... I don't remember if you could actually pop your cars in that. Prop, pop your tire, your tires. I don't think you could. Well, what's in here? A bunch of fabric. 
Yeah, I don't think you could actually pop tires, but that would be actually kind of neat. The problem is we would have to be careful how often it happened, right? Because I think having to change a tire all the time in the apocalypse surrounded by zombies would probably be annoying. Ooh, a workbench. Okay, interesting. I don't have... Oh, I could... I could make myself a new steel door if I wanted to with all the pieces I've been getting, but, uh... I mean, I've already got a workbench in my car, so I'm not sure exactly how valuable this workbench is, unless... I haven't actually investigated whether the workbench in my car can actually make everything or not. Like, maybe it's got limitations, and finding a workbench like this is actually a good deal. else in here. Oh, what's this? A oh, a phone. Gotta grind up phones. Uh, okay, it's dark in here, but I don't think anything else is interactive. That's not interactive. None of this food is real food. Okay, I think we've done what we can here. Unless, can you take this apart? No. All right, then let's get in the car and keep going. So, all right, so we're gonna go a little bit further down the road and grab more of this arc energy stuff. And you'll these right here, in case you don't know, these are potential gate locations. So once I've got enough energy, arc energy to go, it shows me where the potential gate locations are. And what you want to do is, when you're ready to go, select one. The, the, you can never select the one that's closest to you. Or at least the one that is within a certain range of you. You can't select those. So you have to select one that is some kind of drive away from you. And then you have to get there before the storm uh, hits you. So, all right. Let's continue down the road. Wait, I just left the car in drive? Okay, whatever. Guess that's what I did. So there should be another off to the left? Yeah, there's another little energy thing. And another car to scavenge. I mean, why not, right? Let's scavenge the car first. Because, like last time, we should expect that some kind of anomaly is going to sprout as soon as I grab that uh, stable energy. And I, I might have to run away. So, let's do all the scavenging we can up front. Yeah, you are right, Mad Max Aria, that, like, the experience of... Wait, is this just a... Okay, no. The experience of um, having to... You know, somebody having to stand there and do some kind of car repair, like changing a tire while somebody else stood guard for the zombies, that is a really cool and compelling uh, moment. That I think it would be cool if that belonged to State of Decay, too. The only problem is just figuring out how frequent to make it. You know, like, if we were to add something like that to, State of, to any State of Decay game, um, we would need to think about... Does this become an annoying chore? Or is it a cool moment that you do and, you, and you're like, oh wow, that was really cool and memorable, but I don't have to do it again <laughs> for a while. Okay, get out of here, radiation. I said get out. That thing ra irradiates you as long as you're carrying it, so you gotta be careful. Okay, looks like I didn't have a serious anomaly this time. So that's good. Um, all right, so I think what I want to do is figure out, like, find out what this is. So I'm going to pin a waypoint on that. So that's going to be off the road to the left. Oh, oh, before I go over there, let's go over here and grab this stuff. I forgot what this stuff is used for. I think it might just be for crafting. But, actually, okay, my battery is actually, oh, hey, oh, look at that. My battery a second ago was at 49.9. Now it's at 50. So you don't use your battery that much. 
uh, in the daytime because the battery basically is it, it, it's about using I think you expend ba you expend battery when you uh, leave your headlights on I'm assuming there's also other equipment that will be run by the battery uh, that I just haven't gotten yet but I think we just saw my lightning rod in action so that thing struck my car and I think it would have damaged my car pretty severely maybe not that severely I don't know how severely it would have damaged my car if I had another lightning rod but instead when it struck me here, come here, attack me, yeah there we go okay when it struck me it charged my battery instead of hurting me oh, have I scanned one of these yet? There we go. One thing I learned is that the tech tree actually really cares about what you've scanned in the world. That's something I didn't realize at first. Like, sometimes the prerequisite is you have scanned this kind of anomaly, or you've, you've scanned that kind of anomaly. Wait, did I just loot? I thought I lost a, an item. Maybe I picked it up and I didn't realize it. Anyway, so now I've taken to trying to scan things when I encounter them on the road. Like, this doesn't count as anything. Um, but yeah, because I'm, I'm never quite sure if, if something I, I find out in the world might actually unlock some technology back at the base. So, I think I also want to move that food over. Um, I guess I can hold on to this. Notice, by the way, my backpack is larger than it used to be. That's because I unlocked some backpack technology. Um, I also came in with a scrapper and an impact hammer that were pretty close to uh, dead. And now I've used them both to oblivion. And they've both been replaced by the backups that I brought with me. Okay, so now I think i got to decide whether I'm going on foot. Oh, wait, no, I can get much closer to this thing. The road is going to turn in that direction. Okay, so we're, we're not going to worry about that yet. Oh, whoop. Get it to drive. So anyway, when I was uh, talking about grabbing that arc energy and putting it in my car, Ma <laughs> Magic Man 79 started singing Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, which was a song I was obsessed with when I was a kid. What am I hearing? Oh, one of those spinny blades. Okay, yeah, so this vehicle has got a bunch of steel parts, so I feel like I almost feel obligated to scavenge this thing, because I'm pretty sure, I mean, it's it'll give me steel sheets, which are really useful for sort of, um, for the level of crafting that I'm at. Um, it doesn't give me them that often, but it will give them to me. Oh, that thing is getting real close. I need to be careful. It stays to that path, so I think I'm safe as long as I'm not crossing the path. But it would be very easy for me to just take a wrong step in the wrong direction. <laughs> so Random Court says that apparently Guar did a, did a cover of Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car. Shut up. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's, that's pretty funny. And, and weird, like, get out of my dream, get into my car. I think that, that might have, I don't know, I think it would have a slightly weird connotations today. Not that bad. Guar singing it feels like it will always have weird connotations. I don't know why Guar is telling me to get into their car. Oh, interesting. Okay, so... I'm on the road that's getting close to it now, but it's an elevated road, and now it's way down a hill from me. Okay, so maybe I should have actually... Yeah, I should have gotten off the road earlier. Let's let's go back. So it's interesting, the, the map... Ah, stop. Oh, oh, apparently I can't operate the brake while I'm looking at the map. Okay, I thought I could operate the brake while I was looking at the map, but I, I guess that's probably devoted to, yeah, no, that's the zoom controls. 
That makes sense. All right, so stop. Look at map. Oh, we're drifting forward, but it's fine. Yeah, these contours are showing this basically a sheer cliff here. So I need to get off the road around here in order to drive that way. So yeah, just a little bit further. Oh, probably not coincidentally, the best place to get off the road is where this buzzsaw is. Though I don't see a way through here. Once it passes, I'll get past its little route. Okay. It's weird. I keep looking down at the dashboard, thinking it's going to help me see in front of the car better, when it will not. Okay, so the, the front of the car is taking damage from all of these... Um, Oh, crap. From all of these tree collisions, which makes sense. Alright, and we've got... Okay, let's just get past... You know, the car doesn't mind being struck by lightning, so we'll just get past this without worrying too much about getting struck. Get some distance here. Oh, whoop. Oh. Then we'll go and collect the thingies. Okay, let's let it launch one at me. There. Okay. And then once it's gone, we kill it. What was this? Oh, a brand new scrapper? Why was there a brand new scrapper there? Plasma. That's what this stuff is. I couldn't remember what the stuff I collected here was called. Plasma. I think this might be... What is this? A fuel barrel. It has fuel in it. I'm not sure how I'm doing on fuel. But yeah, having a backup scrapper is great. My current scrapper was actually starting to get a little worn. Wait, when did I... When did I pick up an entire crude panel? I forgot when I did this. <laughs> okay, I've got a whole crude panel, I guess. Um, okay, yeah, so my backup fuel can container is already full. I'm not really worried about running out of gas right now. Alright, so let's keep going. Let's find out. Okay, I see this little yellow glowing light. Is that the same place I'm trying to get to? It looks like it probably is. Okay, I'm hearing some ghostly sounds. Yeah, alright. So I don't quite know what that is. Is there an interaction with it? Mysterious audio recording. You know, I don't know why it's playing that music. I think I want to get here, but I don't think I can get up that way. I think I need, might need, like, this will send me under a bridge, I think. I think if I want to get here up this way. Here in 1955, Dr. Ophelia Turner is standing next to President Koch, the top of her head barely clearing his shoulder. She stands, stiff-backed, huh. her hazel eyes affixed on the glass and steel chamber in front of her. She does not appear to breathe until a ball of light appears out of thin air. The sight is tremendous. A lightning bolt frozen mid-strike and the reaction immediate. The gathering audience roars with excitement and spontaneous applause. On Dr. Turner, only a tightening of her lips indicates that she hears the audience at all. 
Dr. Turner and President Koch pose for a picture, but she does not smile even then. That picture is the image splashed across newspapers and science journals for the next decade. The mother of Lynn technology, they called her. The angel of a new age. The newspapers at that time laid the titles on thick while peddling the impending utopia. Then she recedes into the bowels of a government research facility. She's never seen again in public. There are scant appearances here and there in blink and you miss at promotional videos and blatant propaganda fodder. And then she and the promise of Lynn technology disappear. Okay, so this give me some background on the woman who uh, talks to me on the radio. You'll, you'll notice that I, I took a slightly different route than I was originally talking about. Um, so what I'm realizing is, and by the way, I am absolutely recognizing that this is demonstrating the value of having contour lines on a map. Because I realized while I was down here, I had contour lines up to my next destination and contour lines up this way. And actually, it looks like this is probably a bridge. This, like, and so I probably, it would be elaborate for me to try to get up here. And so I, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to backtrack up to that house and I'm going to try to get up onto the train tracks uh, from there. So Mad Max Ari mentions that he's been playing some uh, Nightingale with his friends. That's actually one of my plans for later this afternoon. Uh, me and a bunch of folks from Undead Labs have started playing Nightingale together just to see what we can learn from that game. It's been pretty interesting so far. Um, I considered trying to stream it, but uh, it actually caused OBS to crash from the first time I tried. So I'm probably not going to be streaming Nightingale. But uh, it does seem like an interesting game so far. It's a, it's a survival game, a kind of Victorian-era fey survival game. I saw a car off the side of the road, but it looked like it didn't have any stuff on it, so bypassing it. Wait, is that car? Okay, that car up there has got usable bits. And I cannot pass up a car with usable bits. I wanted to quickly check... I don't know if you can ever get into these containers. They remind me of containers you can get into in Vigor, and so that always makes me want to check them out. What is that noise? Oh, hey, one of those little dudes. Uh, I don't know where he came from. But... I don't think he's causing me any harm right now. Okay, this stuff is just gonna roll downhill. So might as well just let it all roll downhill and pick it up later. <laughs> Ranath Court says, everything seems to be a survival game these days. There certainly are a lot of them. Um, and it's, it's weird, it's like, it's it feels, what was that? Oh, stop it. Okay. It feels a little less faddish than, like, some other things. But, like, but, yeah, they're, people have definitely identified a way to play video games that a lot of people like. Okay, so here's my new scrapper. My old one just died. Okay. So now, oh, it's still driving my car. Get, get off. Unfortunately, it had me kind of, like, starting to scrap my own car. Okay. Come on. Pick up. Pick up thing. All right. Is that everything? Oh, oh there's a few bits that stuck to the car. All right. I'm going to deal with this guy. These are called broken bunnies. I mean, I guess I can see, like, their little projections off them. Could look like bunny ears from certain angles. All right. Oh, here's another piece. All right. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think the car got that hurt. I think we're okay. 
There is something wrong with my back tire. It might... I might have a flat or something on my back tire. Let's get to our next destination. And maybe deal with that. Okay, it looks like our next destination is some silos? Oh, hey, and a fuel, a fuel thing. Let's stop here. Let's refuel the car using my fuel can. We are about half full now. Okay, that looks like that's everything, but I should be able to fill it back up again from this barrel. And then, yeah, I'll just put it back. Oh, and actually, oh wait a minute, there's another barrel over there. Let's... I think between the two of them, we can fill up the car all the way and fill up my little fuel can all the way, which is the ideal. Let's see if that's how it works. Well, we got a bunch anyway. I always want to put this back so I don't accidentally lose it. Looks like it might just be some regular scavenging over here. Just random resources. Can I scrap this? I guess I can knock it around. I can't really scrap it properly. Oh, is that another? There's a bunch of fuel barrels around here. Well, this spot is pretty anyway. Wasn't a lot to do there, but it's pretty. Real quick, just because I'm a psycho about getting all the resources I can, I'm going to go to that last fuel barrel. So Randolph Court asks me, how was Dune 2? Uh, I loved it. It was... Not only was it just kind of a one-of-a-kind cinema going experience. I saw it in IMAX which was the way to see it. I mean just I couldn't believe the scale of everything it was just crazy and and they did such a good job of like you know setting it in this insane world where the spectacle was just there all the time but then when it came to, when it came to like how they spent time in the story the time was all spent like with the characters like getting to, getting to know the characters and um and walking you through, like, the transitions and the changes that they had to make, the choices that they had to make. Like, they did a really good job of, like, of not just creating this big, vast spectacle, but having it be a spectacle that meant something. Um, and so it's, like, it's it's just a lot of times it feels like, you know, some movies anyway, it, it's like you get to pick one or the other. Like, either you get a lot of spectacle or you get, like, a lot of really good character stuff going on. But this one just it just had everything. So yeah, I was I was thrilled by it. I thought it was awesome. Drop off all this. Oh wait, wait, don't don't drop off the not this. Let me keep this. Okay, so it looked like the game was warning me that I wasn't gonna get a lot of scavenging here, but I, I feel like maybe it was underselling this place. Oh, okay, yeah, so there's still uh, another spot to go to straight ahead of me. So I don't know how much stuff there is to explore that is not marked on the map. Like, if I just go off the beaten path to an unmarked area... Is that practically a guarantee that I'll find nothing? Or 
Is the map just full of stuff that isn't marked and the marking is just, like, helpful? Um, what do I need to open this door? Impact hammer. Got it. It looks like... Sometimes if something is locked and you get the message that tells you why it's locked and what you have to do about it. Oh, that was kind of disappointing. Um, that message about how to unlock it will stick around for future things that you, uh, that you highlight, which can be a little bit weird. Okay. We've got another one of these. And it's got two plasma generators. Oh. Which means it keeps working after you kill one. Which means you still have to you have to run away. But the last one you kill, you don't have to run away because the whole thing shuts down. Okay, so this thing's called an abductor. Uh, I don't know if that's literal. <laughs> <laughs> like, do they call it that because it seems like a UFO? Or does it actually abduct people? Uh, I can't know. Because I'm never going to try to get close enough to one to find out. Okay, so we've done that. So, it looks like there's a thing here. I don't know what this is. I wanna keep I wanna go down the tracks and try to grab everything down the tracks, including including this thing. It looks like the tracks are a little bit to my left. Well it does look like my car does go through fuel fairly quickly while it's idling. I've been deliberately leaving the car on when I got out of it, mostly just because I wanted to see like at what rate it goes through fuel. And it does look like turning the car off when you get out of it is a good idea to conserve fuel. Now, they marked train cars on the map, and I'm curious if train cars have stuff for me. Like, are they enterable? Is there scavenging inside? Or is it just marking them as obstacles on the map? Like, that. Okay, I'm gonna quickly... Like, this, this doesn't read like a door. Ah, this is saying no scan target, too. So it seems like chances are, yeah, this is just a piece of background. This is not a thing they expect me to interact with. It's just an obstacle to go around. But I did see a car up ahead that might be... That might be a little bit more valuable, so... It's got, there's an abductor going back and forth around it. Not sure how I feel about that. Let's get past it a little ways. Wait, let's, let's try to get past it a little ways. My car's not responding quite as... Quite the way I expect, I guess. Okay, I'm going to get past it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to get close to this thing. Cause I'm, oh, is this... Is this a charge station? I think this might be a charge station. Note that my ba oh wait, when did when did my headlights turn on? Ah, okay. So this is a charge station. So I think I can recharge my batteries. I think that one of when one of the bunnies attached to my car. There we go. Car's charging up. When one of the bunnies attached to my car, I think it turned on my headlights without me realizing it. Okay, so these charge stations usually have a bunch of resources at them. Okay, batteries all charged up. So that's what that was. There's still that car back there. Hold on. As long as the abductor is not going to give me any trouble. Wait, what's this? Oh, pneumatic tube. Get all the stuff out of the tube. Okay, and then we've got 
Yeah, okay, this guy just gives me a little bit of time. It stops here. And then, and then it turns around. Okay. So I don't know if it's a danger to me if I'm scrapping over here. But I'm just going to do it real quick. Just like I would in real life. I'm going to avoid this weird thing I don't understand. Because I don't know what if it's a threat to me or not. Alright, I think we're good. Go back to the car. I think I've been on this run for like 45 minutes, and you'll notice no storm. So this is definitely a place where the storm is not on a timer, because they definitely would have triggered the timer by now if it was. So it looks like... Okay, so my next destination is this building and the stable energy next to it, which should be... Yeah, if I just get back on... If I just get back on the road, it'll lead me down there. Oh, I just noticed my hood is no longer damaged. Does the charge station also repair the vehicle? Oh, I think this might be like radiation or something. Hold on. Before I go any further, I want to see if there's anything over here I haven't scanned before. It's green stuff. I mean, it's dangerous. Okay, and there's no, no scan target. Okay. Let's get back in the car then, because the car is protecting me from radiation. Oh wait, this train car is open. Hold on. Maybe not all train cars are just obstacles. What's in here? Ah, some kind of searchable thing. Got some resources. Is that it? Oh, another one. All right. Let's drop off our stuff. Nope. There. And on we go. So, uh, Just Monet wants to know if you can store two fuel cans. That I'm not sure of. Um, so one thing you can do is install a bunch of extra equipment on the sides of your car. I haven't looked into what the nature of all that equipment is. I could imagine there being something like a backup fuel tank that you could install. Oh, get, get, get away. Oh, crap. They're on me, aren't they? Ah. Get off. Give me your bits. So yeah, things like, you know, I've got this extra storage here. Uh, that I've installed. I've got this uh, lightning rod. So I could see there maybe being something like that for fuel. Um, I'm not sure. Or another thing we could do, actually, I think I might have seen something like this. There might be an upgrade that is specifically a larger fuel can that goes in that fuel can spot. So, yeah, so but basically, honestly, like, I have not been able to really parse the whole tech tree because the tech tree is so huge and has so many categories and so many things in it. This game is kind of, it's almost unbelievable how much room there is for growth in this game. Okay, so again, abductors have never hurt me so far. They look scary. I don't think they're actually a big deal. This thing might be radioactive. This thing is definitely radioactive. So we're going to collect some radioactive food, because that's always good for you. Yeah, 
saw up some equipment here. Uh, does this need to be sawed up? No. Um, okay, I should get out of here as quickly as I can. This is sapping my health. I think, I think I've, okay, no. Have I searched, oh, did I not search that? I did not. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's get out of here. Wait, when does the radiation stop? Radiation's still going. Oh, okay, this whole place is radioactive. Okay, cool. Um, oh, but behind me and to the left. Oh, there's an arc thing. Okay. Okay. Where do I want to go after I get that? It looks like I probably want to backtrack. Except this is probably a tunnel, isn't it? How do I get up here? It looks like there's just sheer drops. Actually, maybe what I want to do is just loop all the way... Yeah, okay, so I'm going to get this arc ener this this energy here. Go up and get this stable energy next, so we'll be backtracking up the road. And then I'll loop around and see if I can get these guys. But I might not be able to, because I don't know what happens. If, if something happens when I grab the last energy, then... Because we still haven't... I still don't feel like I'm confident that I know how the storms work. So let's turn around... Because also, I don't know what happens if I collect this uh, stable energy and and there's abductors nearby. Like, we definitely saw the moment when I was suddenly attacked by bunnies. And so I could see if there is some negative thing that abductors do. Maybe they do it if you set off the uh, device here near them. Stable anchor, that's what it's called. Open. Okay, it's getting close. It doesn't seem to be attacking me. But we'll just move on quick anyway. Oh, crap! It is attacking me. It is definitely attacking me. And I have no idea what to do about it. Oh, did I just have to drive? Maybe if I just drew far enough, like took it out of its area, it would give up. But in the meantime, it was messing with me and it was really hard to drive with it attached. What would happen if I just sat there? Would there be another way to fight it? Is it like the bunnies where I could get out and like hit it with something? So yeah, Just Monet says, uh, you know, thanks, uh, I might very well try this game out. Uh, you know, I, well, I appreciate it. I'm glad that it always makes me happy when, you know, streaming a game on here makes people want to try it. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of providing a service. I saw some kind of weird bubble. I don't know what kind of weird bubble it was. There was definitely some kind of weird bubble in the air. I'm nervous about just going over there. Um, also, it just occurred to me, I never actually I never actually messed with the apparent flat on my tire. Let me go have a look. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's blown out. I need a mechanics kit to fix it. Did I? Wait, that would be... Did I bring a mechanics kit? brought a ceiling kit. I don't think I brought a mechanics kit. Now, I can remove the tire. Can I craft myself an entirely new tire? Okay, if I have a gear, I can make myself a new summer tire. Or I can much cheap, more cheaply make a spare tire. But let's, let's, make a, let's see if we can make a gear. Yeah, it's just scrap metal. I'll get tons of that. So we made a gear. So now we can... Error can't craft this. Oh. Okay, maybe I can't just can't craft this because... But it has a 2 next to it. Does that mean that I need, like, a crafting table level? Oh, yeah, crafting tier 1, upper right. Okay, so things that are crafting tier 2, I can't craft in the back of my car. I don't know if there's an upgrade where I can craft stuff in this in the car that goes beyond one, 
or if that's just a rule that crafting tier one is the only thing you can do in the car, and you always need someplace special to do two. Well, let's let's craft ourselves a, a spare tire. Let's take this one out, and then let's switch to this one, and then let's remember that we've got this garbage tire. <laughs> Uh, this is large. Hold on. Is there a good place to stick this tire? Uh, there might not be a good place to stick this tire without, like, getting rid of something. Um, actually, I guess... Oh, yeah, so I made that... Unfortunately, I made that gear. That was actually unnecessary. Um, but I can carry this around. And then that will let me move this which will let me move that and I think I'll have to hold this gear I could probably put some of this stuff away yeah okay so we'll keep these large things in the special part of my backpack we are running out of crafting space here I mean of, uh, of scavenging space which is a good feeling actually hey there Rosenberg Okay, yeah, so I'm still wanna, I still want to head up, turn right, grab the last energy, and then we'll have to see... You know, I'm still wondering if grabbing the last energy sets off the storm. If it does, we're out of here. If it doesn't, then we'll do a little bit more scavenging and then get out of here. Wait a minute. Okay. I just realized there was... I think there's one more thing I didn't get from that car last time. Let's just get the scrapper out real quick. I think it's got a trunk. It does have a trunk. Is that it? So it looks like the abductor is specifically about grabbing your car. And if that's true, then maybe, yeah, maybe when I'm on foot, I don't have to worry about it at all. But I do have to worry about it messing with my car if I get my car underneath it. Okay, I'm seeing these little bursts of dust or energy or something coming out of the ground over here. I saw them last time, too. I'm not sure what they are. I'm wondering if it would be a good idea to try to get closer and scan them. scan this. It's called a shaker. Okay, I don't know what it is, but if there's something that I can unlock by scanning it, I have now scanned it. Okay, so when am I going to reach? Oh, see, there's like a... Is this a dirt road that's marked out here? Yes, it's a dirt road with an abductor on it. Guess we'll... Now that I know these guys can be dangerous to cars, I'm feeling a lot like I should uh, skirt them. Again, I don't know. Maybe they only attack if you, like, set off an anchor near them. Like, maybe they are benign all other times. Sorry, I just can't, I can't pass up scavenging. It's just, it's just literally, like, emotionally impossible to me. So, yeah, if I had whatever piece of equipment I think I saw, then I would have been able to, like, grab a spare tire straight off a car and use it on my car rather than having to, you know, scavenge all the bits and craft one myself so I'll get there eventually that does sound I do like the idea of just sort of like driving around a ramshackle car made out of other cars um, this looks like some kind of tanker truck so does it have bits that I can scavenge from sometimes they do 
Yes, steel door. Um, I could siphon fuel out of it, but it doesn't have a lot. Or maybe it doesn't have a lot compared to its capacity, but maybe it actually is a lot. It looks like all of its tires are gone. Oh! Oh, it's got a fuel nozzle! Oh, cool. Okay. You know what? Let's. Let's go down there and get refueled. We're at, you know, two-thirds fuel. Now, how close do I have to get for the fuel thingy to reach? Like, is this close enough? Just barely. You can hear the, the, the rope stretching, which is great. All right, all fueled up. So we're gonna keep heading towards, okay, so this is the final stable energy source. So now we get to answer sort of our last question we came up, we came in here with. Which is, does the storm kick off? as soon as you grab this. Oh, before I grab that. Let's definitely grab some of this. Oh, the abductor. Kind of scary. They got weirdly close to me. Looks like I don't even need to get any plasma out of this one. Okay, okay, so we've done the scavenging. And unfortunately, okay, so I feel like I should probably figure out, okay, if I do have to run. Where am I running to? It looks like... I mean, if I don't have to run, I want to head up here. But if I do, I think I want to head down this way. There's an exit there and some scavenging. And actually, you know what? Actually, yeah, no matter... Yeah. So yeah, if I have to run, that's actually the destination I'll go to. I don't need to mark that if that's the case. I think... So let's mark this. If I don't, if, if the storm doesn't kick in, I'm going up here. And that means I want to point my car in that direction. Because if the abductor attaches to me, I want to move. I want to move fast. Wait, is the car rolling? The car's rolling. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Park. Okay. Oh, whatever. Um, let's see if we can do with this. Okay. Grab. Run. Oh, gosh. Little thingies are emerging from the ground. Shakers. Shakers are showing up. And, and bunnies. It's everything. Everything is showing up. Oh, that was a shaker. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I just want to get away from the abductor before I mess with the freaking bunnies. Stop turning my headlights on. Stop turning my headlights on. Stop turning my headlights on. Okay, there's more bunnies. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? Fine, fine, fine. We're getting out. We're getting out. We're messing with bunnies. Oh, it can... T it can Take off the emergency brake. I mean, off the parking the parking brake. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Stop. Stop, car. Stop. All right, all right, all right. I think we're good. I'm going to murder these guys. Uh, I don't want to get too close to that thing. You know what? I'm not worried about it. It's only a little bit of scrap metal anyway, and I'm actually probably wasting scrapper scrapper durability. Okay. Let's turn off the headlights. Oh, and actually, I think I need to close my door on the side here. It got flung open. There we go. All right. So yeah, continue down this road. It looks like no storm. So, that's cool. So yeah, I really do have as long as I want in here to scavenge. Oh wait, gosh, gosh, stop. Okay, I thought, I didn't realize this was the end of its run. I thought it was gonna... Okay. Yes, continue. Bunnies are still going down the road. Let's just dodge them a little bit. Wait, what's this? Oh, pneumatic tube. Awesome. Source of great loot. Ooh, got a couple of dumpster pearls. Those are fun. They're like, they're like garbage loot boxes. Oh, hey there, M. Haxwell. Oh, and WBPL. Uh, welcome both of you to the chat. I think I was a little distracted when you showed up. Oh, we got the pillars. Um, let's... Okay, wait. How, hold on. How many of you are there? Am I, am I safe at all? If I hold still? Okay, I'm thinking no. I'm thinking I'm not safe. So let's, let's get out of whatever zone this is. Or can I? Like, has just the place generally gotten more unstable? Okay. Oh! The heck? Okay, hold on a sec. Um. Yeah, it feels like there's no safe place to be. Uh, I should scan this. Bollard. Okay, I'm just gonna say that I think my car's safe over there. Wow! I'm not, though. Okay. Do they follow the car or do they follow me? Because I just want to scavenge in this place. Um, locked. Let's pry bar it. Yeah, so I don't know if they're, like, messing with my car right now in my absence. Or if my, if my departure would have made them give up. Okay. It looks like... Have I scavenged everything? I think I have now. So let's go check on the car. Is it upside down yet? No? Okay, so I don't know what that was, and if it's going to start again as soon as I'm back. It looks like there's a scavengeable car up there, but you know what? We've been doing this for over an hour, so... Oh, there's a big old storm coming through. Okay, yeah, so we've been here for a while. So there are a couple of places that I could scavenge in, but we have been doing this for a little while. So I'm thinking, you know, later on, I can take as many hours as I want to scavenge in places like this. Maybe we 
should wrap this run up. Scoot to an exit. And then see what we can do with our with our winnings. So let's open this door. This feels like a pretty safe route to take. Okay, so that opens the portal. Which will be off to my left. But the cleanest way to go is just to follow this. However, now you'll notice on the map, the storm is here. So that storm is contracting. I think also all of the anomalies that are already here, I think are going a little bit wild. That storm is contracting pretty darn fast too. I think I'll be all right though. It looks like I'm not that far off from my destination. And oh, it looks like, oh, I didn't realize that the storm, okay, the storm is catching up with me right here, but just in time. I'm getting to the destination. But it looks like the storm actually converges on the destination. So if I'm making progress towards the destination, I'm also making progress against the storm, which makes sense. Okay. I think we understand storms and energy now. Looks like you're getting the hang of things. Well, once you get that unfortunate driving under control. Shush. Okay, so we collected a fair amount of energy. So we're probably going to be able to unlock some stuff. Let's, let's, let's do the basics first, though. Heal at the first aid station. Fuel up the car. Um, and then let's go grab the transfer chest. Now, I actually don't have... Oops. I don't have a lot of room in my storage. <laughs> so, we'll see how much we can actually transfer someplace. So, let's go through here and transfer out all of the resources first. And... there. We'll leave the big pieces in there for now. Then let's take out all of the paint. Oh, that's... Okay, that... Well, if this isn't paint, it's a welded steering wheel. Put in the detailing station to... Okay, so if I add the detailing station, that will give me a place to put this. Okay, so the rest of this... And apparently there's a fax machine where you can store all of your, like, weird little pieces of data... Oh, wait. No. That's me taking things out. That's not what I'm doing. Uh, putting things in is what I'm doing. Okay, I'll put in whatever I can of this stuff. Okay, that's all I can afford to store. <laughs> so I should probably craft some things to make some more room. Uh, in the meantime, we'll drop that there. Okay, so let's have a look at... The fabrication station. Actually, oh wait, before we do one more thing. I've got a couple of... Nope. A couple of larger items. Oh wait, I, for... I forgot my own inventory. I've got so much stuff. Okay, actually wait, hold on. I think I can. All I want to do with some of these things is just mulch them. So I'm just going to grab this. Spare tire. And mulch. And then similarly, I'm going to grab the crude panel. And I'm going to mulch it. But then, there's another thing that you can mulch. Which is kind of fun. Which is this. This is a uh, dumpster pearl. And I think this is what it's for. I think that basically you put it in here, and it just spits out a bunch of crap. Just random useful things. And so I'm going to pick up all these resources, and then I'm going to see which of these resources I can store in my locker. I wonder if I'll eventually gain the ability to, like, expand my locker or something, because I end up with so much more stuff that I can use sometimes. Um, though eventually, I'm sure I'll use it all, so I'm not complaining. Okay, that can be stored. That can be stored. 
Um, only some of these have room to be stored. And then I've got some paint that I can store over in the paint place. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> ah! Ah! Ah. So back when I was dealing with the abductors, I think Daniel uh, Stret Stretelch uh, said, you should just let them take it for a joyride. I'm sure they'll bring it right back. Maybe it was the abductors or maybe it was the bunnies. I'm not sure. It would be kind of funny just to watch the bunnies take the car for a ride. Okay, so now let's have a look. So now I've brought home some stable energy. So now I have 3.1 stable energy, whereas before I had 0.2, which means I actually can't afford to buy some stuff like <gasps> expanded locker, for instance. It takes six steel sheets and uh, 0.5 stable energy. I absolutely want this. So, I grab the expanded locker and then stick it here. And now I have a larger, I have a larger locker. Is it two separate containers? Yes. Okay, so at some point I'm probably going to want to mess around with like moving things from one locker to the other so that the same stuff is in the whatever, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, so I definitely wanted that. Let's look at other upgrades that I can get. Making circuit boards. I don't know if I need that. Oh, oh, I was looking for the Liberator. I think this is less precise than a cutting tool. The Liberator will nevertheless cleanly and carefully remove individual sections of a vehicle pre by precisely placing small explosive charges. So... And then we got blowtorch. And so I think I want to try the liberator. This takes oh, it's just oh, it's a blueprint for the liberator. So I, I'm not actually going to get a liberator out of here. So basically, devices that you install in in your house and also major structural upgrades to the vehicle, you just get those directly out of the fabricator. But things that you can craft at a table, you just get a blueprint, and then you still have to figure out if you can craft it. So, thermosap crystal. Apparently, that's a thing I need. I don't know what a thermo... I've, apparently, I have two of them. I've got two thermosap crystals. I don't know where I got them before. But if I want to actually make a liberator... And it says, 20 explosive damage per use? Okay, this is actually making me a little nervous. Like, maybe that's not a thing... Not the thing I thought it was. But... Oh, the detailing station. And the fax machine. Places where I can store some of these things that I'm collecting. So let's grab the detailing station. Where does it go? It goes... Oh, of course, next to the paint. That makes sense. So let's install the detailing station. Okay, so this gives me a place where I can keep, like, that welded steering wheel. And I was unlocking a whole bunch of, like, decoration obstacle. Uh, obstacles? Decoration options on the side. Okay, so now I should be able to grab this guy out of here. And I've got a place to store it. So let's interact with this. Um, okay, so it says no compatible items. Okay, so it's got a bunch of pride flags and things. That's kind of neat. But how do I... Ah, okay, hold on. Okay, this gives me... Can I add this now? There we go. Okay, so now I've added something to the detailing station. And so now it shows up. Here we go. So I can install the welded steering wheel. And so now I've got a steering wheel that looks like a chain, which I didn't have before. So that's cool. All right, so what else? What else can I get? Can I afford the fax machine? Because I would love a place to... No, I'm missing a circuit board. I need to research how to make circuit boards. Can I afford to do that? That was... Where was that? Here. Okay, so if we make a circuit board... Then... 
then maybe we can do that. So let's see what we need to make a circuit board. Electronics, copper wire, plastics, we can do that. Okay, so now we've got a circuit board. And so now, can we make a fax machine or do we now lack the energy? Nope, we've got everything, let's make a fax machine. Okay, I love how dependent they are on like, like old school technologies. Like you're doing fantastical things with this vehicle. But at the same time, it all has this sort of like old school vibe to it. Okay, so let's empty out the locker of all of these faxes. Which will give me room to store other stuff I don't need to be carrying around. Oh, including a lot. Well, okay, hold on. Now, I don't know, I'm assuming that the audio cassette can't go into the fax machine, but we're gonna try it anyway. Okay, so I can just send a bunch of, fa oh yes, okay, the audio file can go in there. Cool, awesome. So it's all the weird little lore stuff can go in there. Then I guess I'll just dump the rest of this stuff in here. I'll worry about organization later. But we've now got we've got everything organized. And we've got still got 0.4 stable energy left. So if I had... Okay, I don't have enough stable energy for that. I could invent a relightable flare. Which, I guess that sounds useful because I'm always constantly... Uh, you know, running out of flare. I think that might be the only other thing I can make. What about this? Matter regenerator. I can't afford to make it. What does it do? Repair car components stored in this station while you're out on a drive. Okay, so I can take like a tire, a damaged tire or something off my car, leave it here and it will fix itself in the meantime? Yes, let's do that. It uses the rest of my energy, basically. That's okay. So like, I might be able to, like, okay, like I could stick like a tire, like, like a busted tire in there or something. And speaking of a busted tire, we should craft ourselves a new tire. So now that we are no longer in the field, we can make ourselves a proper tire. And we'll trade it. Oh, wait a minute, what? Oh, right, yeah, that's right. We'll put the summer tire on. Actually, I'm wondering, should I try to keep a spare tire with me at all times? No. I don't think I should do that. Uh, I just realized that might be a little much. Um, also, I'm, I'm carrying a lot of extra stuff here. I should... I don't even I don't even quite know what the blowtorch is for. Like, is it just... Is it like repair putty, only it's a blowtorch? I, I, I just... I don't know. And should I try to bring, like, a mechanics kit with me in case I get a busted tire again? I don't know. Anyway, I think that... I think it's okay if I mulch the spare tire. Because in an ideal world, maybe what I should do is craft myself a backup summer tire. And keep that with me. Um... I'm trying to remember. Can I make myself... I could make myself a new side storage, but I, I would need to put a new rack on the car, and that's that requires a fabricator. So let's just see... How damaged is the car? It looks like it's actually in pretty decent shape. That's not how I do it. There's some way to get a checklist of the car, of the car's needs. Is it like this? 
Okay, the car is just in great shape. It's in weirdly great shape. Like, I guess I did stop at that charge station a couple of times. So yeah, it does really look look good. So I think, I think I'm basically ready for my next run. I'm curious what it's gonna look like. We're gonna end this episode. I'm not gonna try to do another run right now, but. Okay, so the place I went last time was hit by a storm. And the place the storm was last time, it looks like it's unavailable. But I I could go back, I could go here. But this one, it's got fog and it is not stable. So this is a place where I probably would be watching the clock for the storm. And I would have to learn how to watch the clock for the storm. This place is peaceful, but it's a story mission. But maybe that's alright. Maybe that's what I want to do next time. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out on my own. But... I feel like we answered the most important questions we had today, which is, you know, in a stable area, in an area that has that dove icon, we get to decide when the when the storm happens. The storm does not happen on its own. It really is just when we decide we're done, then we're done. Uh, so, and then that, that energy that I collected, like it does actually, when I collect it, it does trigger the anomalies around. It gets to me into all, all kinds of trouble, which is kind of cool. Um, and then that energy, that's what I bring home to feed into the fabricator which then lets me generate all of these other upgrades that I've been after. So let me catch up with the chat just a little bit. Looks like uh, M. Haxwell has been playing State of Decay 2. Uh, he's making comments about what he's, what he's been doing there. Um, Raneth Gord says, passively repairing a car while you're away. Oh, that's a great technology. I think joking about the fact that that actually, I think that was a thing you could do in State of Decay 1 that we took out of State of Decay 2, basically swapping it for um, the, uh, for the manual repair kits. Um, in State of Decay 1, though, I mean, that whole situation was pretty rough uh, because, I mean, you could just flip your car anywhere and just have it be completely destroyed, right? Like, your cars are extremely recoverable in State of Decay 2, in part because we switched to having you do manual repair kits, which you could take out of the field. You could also flip cars back. Uh, I, I think the situation got better, but we, we did go for, you know, having the the method of repair being the, be the same, um, you know, uh, whether you're at home or whether you're abroad. And I could, I could see, you know, if you created an alternate way to do it, that would encourage players, I think, to probably, like, maybe hoard their repair kits rather than thinking of it as being, like, this is just what you spend in order to repair a car. They'd be, like, maybe try to limp home on the weakest car they possibly can or, like, you know, with the least repairs they could possibly do so that they could get sort of the free repair at home. Um, so, I don't know. There's incentives there that might be kind of weird. So, I'm not sure that we'd want to get that do that exact thing. But, yeah, we'd have to see. Anyway, let's wrap this episode up. There's a subscribe button. Here's links to other videos. And, uh, yeah, i got to go do some more work and stuff. But uh, it's been fun hanging out with you all. Uh, and I appreciate all of your input on the game. Thank you, Just Monet. <laughs>